welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and I am joined by a very special guest today, Molly Mandelberg. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah. And she is the host of the Tactical Magic Podcast. So, Molly, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I am so happy to have you here. Uh, I was a guest on your show. It's so nice to have you here now. And so let's go ahead and start by talking about your show. Can you give everybody kind of a quick rundown of what it's about and how you got involved in it? Yeah, so Tactical Magic is, I, I named it the Business Strategies Podcast for the Warrior Goddess Entrepreneur, but uh, it really vacillates between business strategies like how to launch a podcast or how to use your email list or how to launch a program, things like that. And then also a lot of the episodes are about different healing modalities and techniques and just showcasing different experts of different leaders and transformational tools so that people can have sort of a resource kit to set themselves free with. So I work with coaches and holistic practitioners, usually conscious leaders who are great at what they do, but not great at talking about what they do or marketing their businesses or um, using technology to make that all easier. So um, my podcast is sort of a way of bridging those two worlds, the inner transformation, the magic with the outer tangible strategies that we can use to show up, share our message, make a bigger difference, reach more people, and hopefully make more money with less time spent hustling and grinding. That is brilliant and awesome. And honestly, something we all need a little bit more of because I, for one, am terrible at marketing, but I love talking about my show and me doing these shows. So uh, it's really awesome that you have a podcast out there that is great for people, not only like myself, but a lot of other people out there um, that helps them market themselves and actually grow in what they're trying to do and also learn about different healing modalities and everything else. So that's really awesome. How did you get started with this sh your show? Like what, what was your kind of like 3 a.m. kind of inspiring idea? Like where did it come out of? I mean, I had been in business for three or four years at that point, And I was just really wanting to, um, for one, broadcast more broadly, have mm -hmm. more content out in the world. I'm kind of a content creation junkie. I make a lot of things. And so it kept poking me and tapping me on the shoulder of like, Hey, have a podcast. Hey, that might be fun. And then the idea that I could have beautiful conversations and sort of network with other powerful leaders and have a place to bring them to, to showcase their, um, their magic, their power, their, um, like their expertise, that just really turned me on. And so it's progressed um, and evolved over the years for sure. But right now it's a really great way for me to sort of network with other amazing healers and practitioners and leaders. And uh, I learn a lot from my show, but yeah, it started really just, um, hope probably everybody out there listening has those experiences where something just keeps tapping you on the shoulder and it keeps showing up in your world. And, um, at some point you have to do something about it. So that's how it happened. You know, I, those kind of moments, I call them the divine inspiration moments where yeah. you, you end up with the, that idea that just won't leave you alone. And it's like, oh, I should do this thing. I could do that. That's a fun thing. And then lo and behold, six months later, you end up doing that thing because it yeah. won't leave you alone. Uh, totally. so that is really amazing. Now you also have a book out. Is that correct? Yeah, I actually published two books this year, but oh, one wow. of them is uh, nonfiction and the other is a fiction novel that is, uh, yeah, a little less related to what we're talking <laughs> about today. That's totally okay. I mean, I I have fiction books out there myself. I, I've worked on some nonfiction stuff, but I have ADHD, so my brain tends to not focus so much on the nonfiction, but the fiction is very easy for it to follow because it's exciting and fun. Uh, but yeah. let's talk about both your books. Tell me about your nonfiction one or whichever one came out first, and then we'll come talk about your newest one, whichever one. Yeah, I published them in the reverse order, so that's kind of a confusing question to, to follow, but I'll give you both. The, the novel I wrote was uh, is called The Great Rucksack Revolution. And that's a lot of my own stories from traveling all over the world and then mm -hmm. put into a fictional plot. So it's a little bit of a spiritual odyssey, uh, travel log, and um, 
sort of a, it's about nomads, people who travel nomadically and build community wherever they end up. And um, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's kind of a dystopian, apocalyptic, happy ending, but it's got a nice love story and a lot of spiritual mojo in there. Um, And I just, after publishing my nonfiction book, I realized that one should just get off the shelf because I haven't worked on it in like five or six years. And it's in my younger self's eyes, it was complete. So I decided to just self-publish that one. So it's on Amazon too. But the nonfiction book that I did like the whole launch for and did the Amazon bestseller magic trick with, um, that one is called Wild Hearts Rise Up. And that's the same name as my business. Mm -hmm. And that's really, uh, there's this framework that I kind of unpacked that has five cards from the major arcana of the tarot, which are the fool, the magician, the high priestess, the empress, and the hierophant. And I was studying the major arcana because I wanted to use some archetypes for a quiz I was making for my business, which for any business geeks out there, quizzes are like the hottest lead magnet you can create. I grew my list like wildfire. I think I 14 x my email list in two years with that quiz. But as I was looking at those archetypes, I had a friend tell me that the major arcane of the tarot is actually related to the Kabbalah, which is the tree of life. And the points on the tree of life, if you know what that looks like, it's sort Mm -hmm. of a sacred geometry, kind of like the flower of life, but just in a pillar sort of, that those points are related to the cards from the major arcana and that that is basically a map for how an idea becomes manifest, how something goes from the ethereal, energetic inspiration realm down into being created into physical reality. So that can be how a baby gets born. It can be how a piece of art gets made, how a book gets written, how a business gets built. And that framework like lit me up and turned me on. So I used those cards for that quiz. And then it also ended up becoming the five um, sort of sections of the book that I wrote. So it's Mm -hmm navigating the journey that I went on sort of of entrepreneurship of stepping into my power as a leader of uh, the limiting beliefs and the old stories I had to sort of transform or let go of to become who I am now to become someone that was uh, willing to acknowledge she's worthy of the things she desires willing to step forward and stand up and take a stand and um, speak her truth Mm -hmm. and share her message and do what the work she's called to do in the world. And um, yeah, so it's a lot of my deepest, darkest stories, but put into the lesson I learned from them and the five sections of that framework, I'll just sort of share it with you. The fool is about boldness. It's about having that idea or inspiration and not knowing how the heck you're going to move towards it, but taking that leap of faith, that step forward into the unknown and sort of moving in a direction that maybe you didn't think you were going to move in before. The magician is about resourcing yourself. So recognizing that there are tools that you can master and like acquiring that skill set and sort of studying and learning and expanding into that magic. And the high priestess is that alignment phase of like, hey, I've started moving this direction. I'm exploring this. Does it still feel good to me? Is it still feeling like I'm on my path? Um, Or is there a little like course recorrection I could be taking right now. And then the empress is my favorite phase. It's the creation phase where the mother of new ideas, we actually birth things into the world. So that's when the actual book gets written. That's when the business gets created. That's when a lot of the rubber meets the road, so to Mm -hmm. speak. A lot of the productivity part happens. And then the hierophant is the one who sort of brings that knowledge back to the people. They've gone on this adventure and learned these things and mastered them and tried them and brought things to the world. And now the higher fan comes back and is sort of the orator or the messenger that delivers the lesson to the people of how it went. Wow. That is an incredible thing. I will definitely have to get copies of both those books because your fiction one sounds epically awesome as well (laughs) as your nonfiction book. They both sound like incredible incredible stories that you need to definitely check out so everybody who's listening to the show there will be links in the description so don't worry you can pause the show and you can go buy your copy right away and then come back and finish the episode so (laughs) there you go (laughs) thank you uh the you know you have uh, talked about these beautiful ideologies especially with your nonfiction book um have you got any other projects that are in the works that A, you can talk about, and B, uh, that you'd like to promote and kind of uh, push forward into the limelight for people to be looking forward to. 
Yeah, definitely. I love that you asked me this question and we're on your show because my most beloved program, I've I've created dozens of courses, not including all the courses and programs I've helped my clients to build and create. But um, there's one that is like my heart and soul, my favorite creation. And it's came from, it's called magic, which is why it's appropriate that you asked me this mm-hmm. on your show. Um, it came from recognizing that the business side of things, like doing the marketing, creating this stuff for our businesses as healers, as holistic practitioners, as people who have a message to share, that just doing the technical side of it is usually not a that fulfilling and Mm -hmm. be, uh, it's usually not, uh, going to hold the same energy when we do it from a place of, I have to do this, or when we do it from a place of expectation of like, if I do this, then I'll get something out of it. There is such an energetic component to marketing that, um, I have just like a deep passion to share and to help people kind of alchemize into Mm -hmm. kind of recognize that it's there and then begin to embody and then make it part of their life and their business. And so my magic program, magic stands for magnetic influencer collective. And it's a very small, intimate group of, um, usually mostly female presenting people, but, um, yeah, it's generally a more feminine container. Mm-hmm. Um, we spend six months together. So there's 12 group calls, 12 co working calls in between the group calls, and just so much content and resources. I bonus in a bunch of my home study courses. Um, everybody who joins the program gets private coaching with me too. So it's kind of a hybrid between a bunch of home study resources, uh, which we call DIY courses, mm-hmm. and then done with you where we do a bunch of work on the group call and then also the private coaching attention where you get to sort of supercharge whatever you're working on with my guidance and my question asking and helping you sift through all the things you want to create uh, and find what the best next step is so that you don't have to feel like you're drowning in all the things all the time and make that choice of what's most important for me to focus on right now. So it's six months long. It starts August 9th, the next round. Um, I usually run it twice a year. I don't know that I'll always do that, but right now it still feels really good. And a few of those spots have already filled up. I usually keep it around 10 to 12 people or less. And uh, yeah, it's really fun. If anybody's interested in it, um, I'm happy to hop on the phone with anyone on, on the line here who's listening. If you want to ask questions or get more info about it, um, yeah, you can book a call with me at wildheartsriseup.com slash strategy. And I can tell you more about it. That is awesome. That sounds like such an incredible course. I, I would definitely have to recommend that anybody who is looking I guess even business mindset or even maybe not business mindset. And maybe you're just looking for almost a more focus kind of attempt in your life. That would probably be a really great course for you to turn to. Uh, it sounds absolutely phenomenal in so many ways. I am so excited that you got to talk about it and get to promote it. And I hope so many people to get to take advantage of that. And I hope that eventually you get to open up more spots for it because it sounds like it's absolutely rewarding for everybody who gets to participate. Yeah, it's super fun. So uh, do you have any other books coming out in the future? Are you uh, just uh, sticking with the two for now? A great question. Yeah, you know, publishing, getting that novel off the shelf, I felt like was sort of an energetic clearing of now that that one's out in the world also that the third book can come through. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're in the middle of 2022 right now, and I published both of those books in 2022. So (laughs) um, I'm ready for the next book idea to come through. There's been a few things um, sort of peeking their head out at me, but no, I haven't started working on the third book. I will say though, I I write every single day. I write in the morning before I get out of bed. I write at night before I fall asleep. That's sort of my spiritual practice and my mental health um, necessity. And so uh, it's usually in those pages that new chapters or ideas start to come forward, but it could go a lot of directions. I mean, uh, I have things that I'd like to talk about that maybe aren't on brand for my business or in my niche or whatever, but, um, that could come through the, the other thing that could happen sooner. My, I have two podcasts. Tactical Mm -hmm. magic is the one that I have guests on. And then I have another podcast called reveal the game of life, which is my friend, Chris Tomaso and I, my co-host, uh, just having conversations about consciousness and having, um, 
sort of revealing what this game of life is all about and how we can play it best and get the most out of it. And we've talked about having those episodes transcribed and that becoming a book. So we'll see that that might oh, be a cool. book that comes out sooner than the next one I start writing. That would be very, very cool. That's so awesome. Uh, so I have kind of one final question for you and you've already promoted lots of your stuff and all your cool products. Uh, so my last question for you is what piece of advice for today's world would you give to everybody? Yeah, I, that's a really great question. And I think one of the things that I talk about a lot and that I think is really important for all of us, especially the way the world is right now mm -hmm. is to recognize what is yours and what's not yours that the collective, um, the collective consciousness, the collective field of energy right now has a lot of commotion. It has a lot of um, drama. And I don't mean this in a way of spiritually bypassing by any means. It's okay to feel the shadow and it's okay to go there and, and transmute it and experience it when it's necessary. But it's also really important to recognize what's yours and what's not yours. What's your energy to transmute and process and what's kind of not your job or your responsibility. And it is true that the overall temperature of the world and the planet is impacted by how you choose to sort of wield your energy. Um, so to find things that make you feel joyful through whatever you're going through and whatever the world is going through, to find um, your like energetic set point and the places of bliss in your life that actually does contribute to the chaos. It contributes to the overall temperature of insanity versus joy on this planet. So mm -hmm. don't discount those moments. Don't feel like you have to stay sad, be willing to have a fulfilling and self-expressed and happy life, no matter what else is going on around you. And it's really okay to do that. That is a very powerful message and a message that I think right now that a lot of us have forgotten. And we definitely need to remember that, yes, the world is in turmoil and feels like it's on fire. But, you know, we can also change some of the narrative as well by putting some of that goodness and passion and good energy back into the world instead of just being consumed by all the darkness all the time. So that is such an incredible message. Uh, so Molly, thank you so much for being on the show. This was amazing. I cannot wait for all of your exciting new projects that you've got coming up. I am excited to hear all about them. And whenever your new stuff comes out, you're going to have to come back by and talk all about it. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you everyone out there for listening. All right, everybody, you guys stay safe, take care of yourselves, and we'll see y'all next week. Bye, everybody.